It is time for an epic match of Professional Terran versus Protoss. Spawning here in the northwest corner of Year Zero and playing with the Red Terran SCVs. He's from South Korea, the highest ranked player from that country. We have none other than Maru. And his opponent, Captain America himself. He's from the United States. Definitely the strongest player from the United States as well. And of course, we're talking about none other than Neeb. Alrighty, so this is a game that was recently played as part of the WESG. And as some of you might be aware, I was actually one of the English commentators for this event too, together with Rotterdam, Wardy, and Rapid. I just got back from the Ukraine actually a couple of days ago. Uh, the tournament itself was played over in China, so these players here, they were in China. However, the English broadcast took place in Ukraine. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I had an absolute blast. And while there were some technical difficulties, I think we did our best. Uh, the games, at the very least, uh, turned out to be epic. And over the next couple of weeks, I will certainly be bringing you a couple of really cool strategies that I've noticed some of the pro gamers do. I mean, I saw Saro play some really epic ZVPs, and there's some other cool strats that I want to cover as well as some games that I want to cast. But regardless, this is one of those matches where I saw the tail end of it. I, I think I was busy eating or something along those lines. I wasn't actually uh, I wasn't actually commentating these matches. So I do know who ends up winning this match. However, a lot of people said that this may very well be the best game of the entire tournament. So I want to figure out what it's all about. It is going to be an epic match, though. And uh, I think we should be in for a treat because, of course, Neep, I mean, he's an excellent Protoss player. Maru, of course, one of the strongest Terran players in the world, if not the strongest. So, generally speaking, right, whenever you have two of these titans facing off, you immediately get an epic match going right from the get-go. It's also actually pretty uncommon uh, for these level of players to face off against each other. I mean, Maru primarily competes within the South Korean scene. He does fly out every once in a while to, for example, China, uh, where this event took place. But he doesn't, generally speaking, face off against someone like Neep very regularly. So, you also have these, these different kinds of playstyles clash. Kind of like this, by the way. Rather than going for the wall off right here at the top of the ramp, he decides to block this little pathway so the Reaper can't just simply jump up. It's one of those small little moves that some of the players do like to make. Uh, but this should be a really cool match. So obviously we are on year zero. Now year zero is easily the biggest map together with King's Cove. And usually this is the map together with King's Cove once again that really does allow for some epic long macro games. I mean, yesterday, for example, I uploaded a really sick game uh, between Dark and Solar on King's Cove. It's probably the best ZVZ I've seen recently, with maybe the exception of uh, Serral. Is that going to work? Can he still jump up? Well, I guess he can jump up, but he's not going to be able to get that much done. Uh, but maybe with the exception of uh, of Serral going up against Sue recently at IAM Katowice, that actually took place on Year Zero. But regardless, what I'm trying to say is that uh, usually these bigger maps at like the tippity top of the skill level in StarCraft, they usually have been bringing us some epic, epic games. So I'm excited to see where this one is going to take us, just simply because the players are allowed to get a lot of bases up, and usually that brings us to these really cool late game scenarios. The thing is, I guess, I guess early game StarCraft is really well figured out. A lot of players are very good at playing the early game. Then obviously the mid game is something that you arrive at very regularly as well. But it's that really late game and the ultra late game army compositions that are still very much so up for grabs. And uh, well, I mean, spoiler alert, this game is going to take us into that direction as well. So I, uh, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely interested to see what's going to happen. Now, by the way, um, for the longest time, I never casted any games where I already knew the end result. So obviously, um, I, I try and not cast any games where I already know the end result, because that just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, but I was interested in hearing your opinion about this kind of thing as well. There are some epic games, like for example, this one, uh, that I know are very, very good. And while I have seen the end result of it, I haven't like looked at the specifics of it. Would you like me to cover more of those on the YouTube channel as well? I guess there's a little bit less hype. But just let me know down below in the comment section. I'm, I'm very curious to hear what your thoughts are on that. If ever everyone disagrees with me on that, you think, you know what, Loco? I think you should only cast games that you haven't seen yet for the hype. That's cool. But if there's like a really cool match, right, that I can showcase, maybe we can, uh, we can still cast some of those. Obviously, uh, that's only going to be in like very, very specific exceptions. The thing is, usually, right, at these top level tournaments, the highest level players are facing off against each other in like the end rounds of the event. Right? And usually, if I'm not casting the games myself, I do watch them live, uh, you know, online or, or in person, right? So I watch a lot of the games as it is. And uh, obviously, um, 
you know, I, I can't really bring those games to you because I already know exactly what's going to go down, and that's just simply not very exciting. What's going on, Amon? How are you doing, buddy? Oh my god, he's massive. That's a brave liberator pilot right there. But regardless, uh, let me know down below what your thoughts are on this uh, on this uh, situation. We do have a, a Blink Stalker opener right here for Neep. A very passive approach though for both players. A little bit of Blink Micro right here at the front. Not really taking a whole lot of damage. And right before the Siege Tank can shoot, once again, the Stalkers get on out of there. He may actually try and go into the main base. The Observer is just about to arrive here as well. It's going to be able to provide that high ground vision that Neep needs. But obviously on the back of this, we can already notice right here, he's grabbing himself to third base. So by no stretch of the imagination is Neep going to try and commit too much, right? You don't want to lose these units for free. Because then if you, uh, if you lose them, obviously you end up getting into a lot of trouble when your opponent is moving moving across the map. So actually already getting some of these into the red hit points is, is a little bit risky, but all Neep is really trying to do right now is slow down this Terran opponent. And uh, well, I guess one of the Stalkers is not going to live to tell the tale. The SCV still lives though, just uh, continuously uh, building up that supply depot. There has been that one Liberator here being a little bit of a nuisance, looked like it was a little bit of a skirmish. Apparently, uh, while well, that, that toe of the Stalker was in, apparently it wasn't being shot at just yet. Uh, but the Liberator getting zero kills so far. It has been deflected really nicely by one of those Sentry's Tickle Beams. There was one earlier. I think it's the high energy one that was just simply hanging out over there. Uh, but so far, right, it's been a really macro focused opener here from both players. We see Maru going into the double engineering base, so he's going to continuously upgrade. He's also getting himself Stimpak as well as Combat Shield right now. Third Command Center is done, and he's going to add on additional barracks production. So, the thing is, right, against really good opponents, there's a lot of uh, respect as well amongst these players, right? The thing is, um, Amaru knows that he's likely not going to be able to get too much done with two base pushes against someone of the caliber of Neep. And since the distance on this map is humongous, just simply moving across the map and, and making your way with your army across is going to take a lot of time. It usually allows players to prepare in time as well. So there's like a, a mutual sense of respect here between these pl two players. I can guarantee you if, for example, Maru was going up against like a, a weaker Protoss player, he would play a lot more aggressively. And the same can be said for Neep. Neep would probably commit to some sort of two-base push, but he knows he's not going to be able to really get much done against someone like Maru. I mean, Maru is like, it's like a war, okay? You can't really fight against Maru very easily. He's going to cover all of his tracks really smoothly. So instead, there's this weird sense where both players are trying to be as greedy as possible, with Neep now already taking a fourth base at like the seven and a half minute mark while building up Colossus. It's, uh, it's kind of a unique sense, though. We don't really see that very much. I mean, we saw the same thing once again in that ZVZ I was talking about earlier, um, where both players opened up Hatch Hatch Gas Pool. They're being so greedy that they're trying to outsmart, as the, uh, outsmart their opponent, but the opponent is also being really greedy. It's this weird gentleman's agreement that we see quite a bit right now at high-level StarCraft. Excellent blink right there, though, by Neep. We'll be able to get away there before the Marines and Marauders arrive, and obviously that stim pack is pretty expensive. As, uh, of course, you can't really, uh, you can't really uh, stim indefinitely without your units being picked off as well. All right. We may finally see a bit of a skirmish, guys. Eight, eight and a half minutes into the game. There's actually going to be a bit of a fight here between these two players. Maru showing off his excellent stutter step micro. Although the Blink Stalker, of course, can cover the distance quite smoothly. <sighs> Beautiful target firing right there by Maru. Did you see that? He actually got himself some of those kills on the weakened stalkers, so he was purposefully target firing down the weakened ones. Although apparently, just uh, two right here, actually a third one as well, with very low hit points, they will live to tell the tale, especially now with their shields regenerating. By the way, if you're interested in that ZVZ, I'll go ahead and post the link to it down below. Highly recommend you can uh, you check it out, especially if you uh, if you are a Zerk player, but also if you don't enjoy watching Zerk that much. ZVZ has really become a sick matchup. So I'll go ahead and post a link to that one down below in the description of this. Alrighty. So Neep, man, look at this. This is probably the most passive game of Protoss versus Terran I've seen. Um, there's already a fifth Nexus going up right at this point in time. 
Now, this is actually one of the issues that oftentimes Terran players run into. The strength of Chrono Boost is quite remarkable, right? Protoss can get themselves a really solid economy out really quick, and then they can start upgrading two uh, of these forges at a time as well. And usually, it is going to be the Protoss players that finish up their upgrades significantly before Terran would be able to do so. Now... Actually, in one of the upcoming patches, this is not quite live just yet, but Blizzard recently announced this together with a Nidus Worm nerf. Um, Protoss upgrades are all going to take quite a bit longer, so I believe it's plus 15 seconds on plus 1 uh, for armor, shields, attack upgrades, as well as air attacks and gr uh, air armor as well, and then I think it's plus 18 or something for the tier 2 and like plus 20. 21, I would like to say. I'm not entirely sure on the specifics uh, for plus 3 as well, but... Yeah, the Protoss upgrades with the, the strength of Chrono Boost and, and the players getting so very good at getting those upgrades out really quickly, they are getting nerfed a little bit to the point where Protoss are not going to be able to hit as smooth of a timing attack. But Neep certainly can go ahead and do so in this particular match. Liberators, though, already uh, ready to seal the deal. There is indeed a Planetary Fortress. Great anti-armor missile right there, but it looks like Neep doesn't really care. He is going to indeed commit forward, blinking right now with the Stalkers as well, trying to pick up as many of those Liberators as he can. One still remains, though, and it's going to make it difficult right now for these uh, these laser giraffes to go into that liberation circle. Even though Neep is from the land of the free, the liberation circle right here is indeed in favor of Maru. And uh, apparently almost to like taunt the Protoss here, right? Maru puts up a fifth command center right in front of those Colossus's nose as well. I mean, how big is a Colossus, by the way? Someone can probably look it up. I know a Marine is supposedly like 180, like six foot. A Zealot is already much taller than that. I can't imagine, like, the Colossus is probably, like, the size of a building, like a flat, right? It must be, like, an absolutely, like a skyscraper. It has to be, it has to be absolutely massive. Regardless, it is gonna start dealing a little bit of damage, and while I'm sure they could see some of those Liberators from a distance as well, they probably know, too, that it's not very good to go into that area. There's actually already a 5th Command Center right here at the uh, bottom left-hand corner. Maru looking around to see if maybe it's going to be any kind of War Prism play. Well, there is indeed a War Prism, but it's going to be a little bit further out. As right now, Maru um, is going to have to go up against someone who's got several sources of splash damage. So we see the Templar Archives right now researching Storm as well. Um, both of these players really haven't taken any kind of significant losses. That's actually surprising. We are, we are 12 minutes into the game, and while I guess there's 4,000 resources lost on the side of Terran, and there's 5,000 lost on the side of Protoss, um, this is a very, very small amount at this point in the game. Both players being extremely respecting of each other. And I guess, yep, that Zealot is gonna take one of those siege tanks as collateral damage as well. Warp in inside of the main base right now, even ghosts are already out. My man, that's so quick. These ghosts are gonna be able to obviously uh, use their EMPs on uh, on all of those High Templar as well. And speaking of High Templar, there's a bit of an, uh, an engagement right here in the center of the map. Neep though, mostly just doing a little bit of spring cleaning right here. I mean, it is starting to get springtime, right? I guess actually spring is very, very soon, right? Isn't spring the 21st of March? I mean, if you're watching this in the future, I guess it's gonna be a little bit, little bit different. But regardless, this is a really beautiful engagement here for Neve as he gets rid of so many of those Liberators, but he does also end up losing quite a few of those Stalkers in the meantime, too. While that's going on, though, we see a big Zealot warp in inside of the main base, and actually denying the infantry armor there is quite significant. It's going to make it harder for a push to happen. At the same time, though, Maru doesn't really care about that too much. He manages to unload four of those Metavex full of units inside of the fifth base of his opponent, and he's actually going to be able to deal a lot of damage right over there, picking up the Nexus, but also a lot of the probes. There's still Zealots, though, going to town right here at the other bases, and actually, while this game was very passive for the longest time, right, we see aggression pretty much everywhere everywhere right now. Mass Recall will be utilized, although Neep is not going to be able to bring all of those units home. The Colossus are probably going to be enough, though. And while there are more reinforcements here coming up for Neep, it looks like Maru is looking to go back home right at this point as well. So who actually came out ahead there? Let's have a look once again at, at resources lost. If I were to make a guess here, it is just barely going to be in favor of Terran, but both players definitely trading pretty much evenly. It's so scary how good these guys are, right? We now do see that Tempest transition here for Neep. So after that big engagement settled down, he's like, okay, you know what? I've got three Stargates right now. I've got myself a, a fusion core as well. 
Um, he should be able to start up quite a little bit. It's not a fusion core. That's what I was thinking right there. It's a fleet beacon. I mean, a fleet beacon is basically the Protoss fusion core, okay? He can't make better cruisers, although I wish I wish that would be a possibility. That'd be pretty sick to see, right? A merged army. Um, he's not going to be able to do that in this particular game. Uh, but uh, the Fleet Beacon is indeed uh, done right now. And he's going to be able to start producing some of those Tempests. Now, Tempests, they are a more reliable answer when it comes to this mass Liberator army. Usually, the longer that the games go, the bigger that Liberator count becomes. You always want to have at least some bio army on the ground. Usually, the later the game goes, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be heavier in ghosts, but you pretty much always want to have at least some marines and marauders. But regardless, tempests are really, really good at just simply uh, picking up the liberators from a distance, especially when you have a couple of those oracles. Uh, into the mix as well. You can use the oracles to basically tag the liberators and uh, to uh, to make sure that the Tempest can shoot at their maximum range. Now, nice little attempted run by here. Oh, I love that. Ooh, the High Templar drop. But a lot of them end up going down there as well. And while some of the... He's baiting, man. Ooh, <laughs> I love it. Well, some of the uh, Marines and Marauders there will be picked off. A lot of the High Templar were killed as well. So this is where those Liberators um, are going to be in a little bit of trouble, right? See how Revelation is used right here on a lot of those units? That means that the Tempests are going to be able to pick them up from that really long distance that they've got. And this is where that Protoss army is very, very potent. Especially the Revelation is super, super good. Both players, though, looking to engage several different angles at once. It, like, uh, it looks like, uh, so far, Maru is just okay with defending here in the top part of the map. He's actually splitting up his Marines, Marauders, and a couple of Medivacs here towards the bottom side to defend any kind of Warpins on that angle as well. Now, this is a really big engagement, though. Maru shoving forward, trying to get this Protoss player to back off. And while the Colossi can't quite shoot up, even though they are absolutely humongous, um, they're not going to be able to do that just yet. They're not going to be able to, like, be the Wraith Walker that we have in the campaign and in co-op, uh, where they can go ahead and hit those Liberators. So eventually, it looks like Maru is going to be successful at the same time. Though, at the bottom side of the screen, we do see a big warp in right here for Neep after hitting some solid uh, psionic storms as well. He's going to be able to warp in at least a couple of those zealots, but still, planetary fortresses are really, really good. You know what I would like to see at this point? I would like to even see like a second planetary. I mean, good luck breaking this position at that point, right? That's going to be very difficult to achieve. Regardless, while it looks like Neep might finally be able to start breaking through this area, I think by the time that he's going to be able to do so, this base is already going to start running out, right? He's been trying to fight that area for like the last 10 minutes, it feels like, and he hasn't really been able to get that much done. The defense has been really solid here for Protoss. However, Neep is not slowing down with the expansions here either. Now, okay, I like this. Maru going for the tactical nuke. Tactical nuke, of course, absolutely uh, insane when it comes to dealing damage, but more importantly at this level of play, usually for zoning purposes. This is going to prevent that Protoss army from getting into the area. Now, while that's going on, though, we once again see that drop play right here at the bottom of the screen. Really nicely done, though, by Maru. Once again, cleaning this up really cleanly. And while Neep does once again warp in a lot of units, that's actually a lot of Dark Templar here. I don't see any detection here at this point. Uh, he actually has Shadow Stride. Wow, he actually has Shadow Stride. So he's going to be able to blink with the Dark Templar. That's a very uncommon upgrade. He should be able to go after the base right now if he, if he wants to. I mean, there's not going to be that much here. Yeah, here we go. Oh my god, I have not seen this upgrade being utilized in so very long. There's no scan here in time, and indeed, the planetary fortress gets picked off. And in just the blink of an eye, we actually see like a whole bunch of SCVs dying as well. Now, I love the fact that actually Maru continues scanning, because he gets pretty much all of those Dark Templar kills as well. How many was that in total just now? Where was the Dark Templar? Nine of them. Okay, so nine for a planetary fortress? Is that really... Like, I guess he got some SCVs there as well, right? But is that really value? I'm not entirely sure. That big, big warp window of Dark Templar coming in so unexpectedly. And I guess Neeb is just simply gonna hide with these uh, these ninjas right next to the Vespian guys. Here. Look at them. I mean, I've never seen such a stealthy army before. Not even noticed there by Maru. I think that's mostly because Maru is preoccupied on the other side of the map. Once again, beautiful EMPs there by Maru. Forcing this Protoss army to back off right now as all of the High Templar are out of energy. And that's a really beautiful engagement there 
by our Terran player, hitting the perfect EMP, removing all of the shields off of all of those Protoss units, but more importantly, the energy outside or out of those High Templar. And without Psionic Storm, that Protoss army is not nearly as menacing. Now, obviously, they will start uh, regenerating some of that energy as well, but it's going to take some time to go back up to that, uh, that, to that really, really nice uh, energy count so they can continue fighting. All right, so while this is all going on, right? While Maru really isn't taking a lot of damage, he is going to start running pretty low on resources. Neep has been mining more than his opponent, and he's now grabbing, basically, if you were to, like, draw, like, a, a, a line, like, a vertical line on the minimap, he's taking all of the bases on the right-hand side. He's taking all of the bases on his side, and apparently, that now allows him, or that now allows him, ooh, big nuke, by the way, coming up over here. Uh, but it allows him to start building shieldy boys and whatnot in the center of the map. He's got to be careful, though. Okay, Neep does recognize the red dot. He knows he needs to get on out of there. And eventually, I think that that ghost will be picked off. But not without a, a pity EMP, right? Removing some of the shields right there on those zealots as well. Those nukes, though, they can be game changers. Now, I like this. A liberator ready to move forward. I, I guess he's going to try and assault the mineral line, but man, Anip is on top of everything. While that's going on, though, we do see a big engagement right here in the center of the map. Maru must have sniffed out what's going on. Yeah, he knows about the fact that, indeed, there are a lot of these uh, shield batteries being set up here in the center. Ideally, you don't let that happen, because sort of similar to chess, the center of the map at these kind of moments becomes really, really important. It's the areas where you can start launching assaults from, right? And if you control the center, usually you can control the rest of the map as well. Obviously, there's uh, there's no drop play in chess. <laughs> there's no medevac drops in chess, but I still think that the strategies do hold true. Uh, it's a scary, scary situation to be in if your opponent is taking control of an area like that, because she can't really take the fight there anymore. All right. Now, Maru is going to continue the harassment. Looks like the nukes aren't really working out too well for him right now. So instead, he's going to go and resort to the good old Liberators. Now, obviously, these Liberators, they're not going to be able to get too much done here, as Stalker Warpins are going to be just fine. In the meantime, though, big Zealot Warp in here as well. Now, going after the base, I like that quite a bit. There's one High Templar inside of the uh, Warp Prism, but it's not going to be uh, in time, or it's not going to be dropped in time, as indeed the... Uh, the War Prism there was picked up by just simply using Ghosts. It's actually kind of funny. At this level of play, usually we see Ghosts being utilized for their EMPs and then also their nukes, right? They can be really, really lethal, however, in just straight-up engagements. They deal a surprising amount of damage and they're actually really tanky as well. So Ghosts, they are much more stable of a unit in the late game than many of these other Terran Baya units. I always am kind of surprised with the amount of, like, just straight-up DPS that they have. It's way higher than Marines and Marauders. Especially now that he has 3-3 upgrades, obviously, done. All right. So, Neep is going to continue the harassment. Now, he's still going after the base right over here. Once again, a nuke is being utilized over here. This one is going to be difficult to spot, though. Is that going to be... No, that's not going to be spotted. That is a weird red dot to look for, and it looks like actually Protoss right now is preoccupied on the top side of the map. I know there's a fight happening, but man, that is a lot of damage right there being done with one of those tactical nukes. Neep, though, probably recognize what's going on right now. He's going to lose one of the High Templar here as well, and Maru, I have to be honest with you, even though he's not mining as much as his opponent, once again, though, a nuke is coming up. He is trading very, very well, yeah. He's dealing so much damage. Now, there is an Observer, and the Zealots apparently are going to be able to deal the damage. But while Neep is still pushing this base, right, I feel like by the time he can break it, if he's going to break it in the first place, it's going to be fully mined out. I almost feel like this area is not very relevant anymore to uh, to skirmish over that much. I kind of feel like Neep is losing too much trying to get something done over here. Yeah, I feel like these bases are far more, far more valuable to engage into right now, right? This is one of those things, though, that we'll find out the longer that StarCraft 2 goes on. Right, do you actually want to engage here? Oh my god, massive uh, storm right there on so many of those ghosts and a few of those marines as well. This Terran army is starting to look real scary. I mean, Maru is essentially maxed out right now. He could max out on marines any moment if he would like to. Instead, he's trying to max out on units that cost gas, so that's why he's really prioritizing the gases here as much as he possibly can. But this is a scary, scary force to go up against if you are in need. 
Now, Neep, once again, warped in a lot of Zealots. These Zealots are doing work, right? They're once again trying to get the Planetary Fortress, and I think they might be able to do exactly that. At the very least, this is now also finally allowing Neep a little bit of wiggle room at the top side of the map as Maru is repositioning most of his army towards this base over here instead. There you go, the Ghost absolutely sniping down everything, and that's actually the one spell I still didn't mention just now. I mean, obviously, their, uh, their EMPs are nice, their nukes are nice, but snipes are absolutely phenomenal too. But while it looks like Neep might be able to finally break this position, I mean, I feel like there's not that much done. Once again, though, big nuke right here at the bottom of the map. That nuke. Uh, he needs to move the probes. He needs... No, no, no. You need to move the probes, dude. Get the probe. Ah, that's so much... Oh, my... Okay, well... Oh, my God. Well, I guess he got some, some SCV kills right there while that's going on as well. But that's a lot of probes going down in just the blink of an eye. And more nukes are coming up. Nukes in Terran versus Protoss. They're not very common. Once again, Neep looking to go after this base. There's no mining here anymore, man. I really don't think it was really worth conv like committing that many resources into trying to fight a base over here. I guess it's more about the mental victory more so than anything else. The one SC or the two SCVs right now in the back trying to still get something done. But in the meantime, Maru stemming forward with Marines and Marauders while he climbed all the way up the, the Terran tech route, right? And he could even start producing battle cruisers and liberators and whatnot if he likes to. He just simply went down and once again started producing Marines and Marauders. And I kind of like it because this army of Protoss, it's not very mobile. Right? That's the one downside. I mean, obviously, uh, the tactical recall here does allow it to be rather mobile. You can send the units from one side to the other, but it is not really going to be a very reliable source as you can only use that every once in a while. All right. So, fight in the top left-hand corner of the map. Apparently, it's done. <laughs> Both players are now uh, organizing themselves on another area. Now, actually, a couple of disruptors are now also coming up. I like that for Neeb. Going for his third source of splash damage after, I guess, the Archons. Uh, but he's going to be able to uh, to use those disruptors here as well, and I like that. A lot of these Terran units, they have been clumped up quite a bit. Now, obviously, there's quite a bit of range on Storm, but the range on... Ooh, well, that one's... Uh, oh, it wasn't actually a snipe. I thought for a second it was a snipe, but... The, the disruptors can reach further than those Psionic Storms can. These two players, man, they have a scary army. Neep still mining more than his opponent, I think, but... There's starting to be a lot of economy right now for Maru as well. Even just mining the gases at this point. It's really wonderful here for the South Korean Terran. <sighs> Dude, how many nukes have we seen? I swear. There's so many of them. Oh, apparently the Vikings are feeling brave enough to move forward. And yeah, as soon as Maru does realize he's got that area covered, he decides to cancel the nuke and he's now utilizing it somewhere else instead. The Vikings, though, ooh, taking a lot of damage there from the storm, but they're trying to pick up as many of these Colossus as well as the Tempest that they can get. Liberators right now joining the fray as well. A couple of these rallying probes that were long distance mining will be picked off. Neep recognizes that he's not going to be able to hold the high ground here. He needs to try and break this position because if Maru can start advancing from this area, say goodbye to these bases in the corner, right? That's going to be very difficult. Apparently though, Neep recognizes the situation that he's in. He instead tries to force this Terran army back by moving forward towards the planetary fortress and it looks like that is successful. Now once again, these ghosts are taking so much damage. Storm not even being utilized here on some of those SCVs and so many of them end up going down as well. Immortal desperately trying to target fire down the planetary forces, but the mass repair is still going to be enough, and Neep is forced to back up. While that's going on, though, a Marine Marauder force ended up picking up that newly acquired Nexus here. I think it's like the third or so time that uh, that Maru tried to take, or that Neep tried to mine from that base. And uh, while sure there's this really nice position right here at the top side of the map, right? We haven't seen that coming to play. I love the fact that Maru is almost making Neep forget that that is even there, right? He's like, you know what? We can fight over here. Don't worry about it. And I, I really think that's smart thinking here by, uh, by Maru, right? Thinking very, very tactically. Not just playing this really well, but also recognizing the situation that he's in. Realizing that he can't really fight over there. So instead, he's now taking the fight towards the bottom area of the map. Ooh! That one disruptor, man. I wasn't sure if there was anything underneath those Vikings. It takes just one hit right here for a disruptor, by the way, to kill like a whole clump of these ghosts. If the ghosts are gone, this army of Protoss is going to advance really easily. Oh, man. Whenever I see disruptors at play, I just sit on the edge of my seat. I don't, like... I, I've lost so many armies to disruptors myself. Disruptors are such a nail-biter. I mean, they can deal so much damage, but oftentimes at this level, you see them, like, dealing no damage. It's just, it's kind of insane how good some of this micro here is. Anyways, finally, though, it looks like we've, uh, we've stabilized. Both players have taken the bases that they like. 
Apparently, though, Neep is still feeling adventurous, moving forward right here, trying to lead some of those Zealots, trying to distract that uh, Terran army so they are kiting backwards, and then the Disruptors coming in from the side as well. Not quite working out, though, against someone of the caliber of Maru. Both players still maxed out, and I really feel like we are starting to reach the point where they are gonna have to fight, right? It's starting to look like we're gonna reach the point where both of these armies are gonna have to clash. We've led up to this moment for a really long time. But I think it's gonna be uh, these bases, these final couple bases, that will be game deciding. If either of these players is allowed to mine it, it's gonna be very, very scary. Now that is, once again, a good disruptor hit there, but these liberation zones, right? They are 100% out positioning that Protoss army. I love the utility right here of the nukes as well. The nukes just simply allowing that Protoss army uh, to go away, right? Forcing the Protoss army to back off. And while Neep is indeed now forced to move across the map, I'm not entirely sure what he's going to be able to get done right over there. Once again, actually a big nuke connecting with 23 of those probes as well. The Marines and Marauders stim forward. They will be able to pick up a second Nexus here. And apparently Neep, he's on the ropes right now. He has decided that he wants to move across the map and test his waters over there. But the Liberators, man, they are ready. And while there is going to be, once again, that really nice Oracle Revelation that's going to allow the Tempest to do a little bit of damage, there's really not that many Tempests left over here as Maru takes the economic lead right here, right? Look at the amount of income right here for Terran. It's absolutely in his favor. The bank that Neep had earlier is 100% gone, but his army is massive. He's got a very scary force. There's still a lot of splash damage here. And with one good disruptor hit or one good storm, this can still be his game. But I've got the feeling that if Maru is going to mine these bases out, right? He's going to be in a phenomenal spot as he can just simply make so many more units. A couple liberators right here on the top of that ramp, making it difficult to, uh, difficult to engage. But here we go. Looks like Neep wants to fight right here, right now. The ghost backing up. They're trying to make sure that they do not get hit by all of those disruptor shots. There's still so much Protoss left over on the ground. The Vikings right now landing actually as well they obviously deal bonus damage to mechanical that's what most of this protoss army is composed of but in the end it seems like there's just a little, little bit too much here for terran more reinforcing units now coming up there's not that much anti-air remaining and with the protoss ground units gone it is neep who decides to tap out in this sick match of tvp I know I said it yesterday. I've been playing StarCraft for nine, nine years or so. I've been playing pretty much every single day. I play at least a dozen games, usually closer to 20. Um, even after all those years, I look at a game like this and I realize, you know what? <laughs> Never going to be able to be as good as these guys. What a ridiculous display of skill. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much for your generosity. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day, okay? Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you once more tomorrow for another video.